Guys, I have the opportunity. This is 15 years for me uh, serving this generation full time, 16 almost, and um, it's just a joy. You know, I get a chance to speak to a lot of people, but there's nothing better than speaking to young people. Amen? You guys are, are the, the pride and joy of my heart, and uh, I love this team. I love our staff. Can you guys just help me appreciate this Elevate staff and all these volunteers and everybody that came out to speak to you this week? Yeah, yeah. Well, all right, do you guys have, you have your Bible? Do we get those scriptures up? We're, we're good? Give me a thumbs up. Okay, cool. You can get your Bible out, but I have the scriptures on the screen for you today. So... Um, if you want to get your Bible out, that'd be great. I would definitely, if you want to take notes, that would be awesome. Get that out quickly. And while you're doing that, everybody say the covenant. The covenant. I need some volunteers, young people. All right? Um, all right. You right there. You look ready, girl. You look, oh, you're ready. Oh, come on. You right there. You right there. I'm going to get two guys over here. My man right here. My man right there. Come on. Come down here. You too, buddy. You too. Come on. Wait, hold on. You too. Come on. I got three guys. Abraham, Isaac, okay. This will be perfect. All right. Everybody say, I'm a part of the blessing. All right. Everybody say, I'm under the blessing. I'm blessed. All right. All right. Here we go. In Genesis... Chapter 12, if you, go, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn there, but I want you to listen. I'm going to set this up for you real quick so you can see it, and then I'm going to, I'm going to help you understand something, all right? Now, I need, I need one more volunteer, somebody who, who's, who's God, like, you're going to play God in this, in this. oh, my man, <laughs> come on, bro, with your Spider-Man shirt on. He was like, God, I'm going to be God. Hustle, you got to hustle, hustle, use your muscle. Hustle, oh. All right, you stand right here, man. You stand right there. You got to look like God, though. All right. Like, okay. Is that how you, now, look, look at them, though. Look at them and look like God. <laughs> All right. So here's, what, here's what, what happened. God created us in Genesis chapter 1, 26. The Bible says he created us in his likeness and in his image. Um, he created Adam and Eve so that they could have fellowship with God. The number one reason you're made is to know God. What's the number one reason you're made? The number one reason you're made is to what? Know God, period, end of story. God made you not to be a superstar athlete. He didn't make you to be a singer. He didn't make you to be a, 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 an engineer. He didn't make you to do all those things. He made you first and foremost to know him and then, secondly, to make him known. All right? So what's the reason you're made? I'm made to know God and to make him known. If you're taking notes, write that down. I am made to know God and to make him known. Say it one more time. I am made to know God and to make him known. Genesis chapter 1, he says, he, 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 he uh, blesses them. He tells them to have dominion over the earth, be fruitful, multiply. He creates a covenant with mankind. He says, I'm going to work with you. I want to I bless the entire earth. And in order to do that, I want to use you. And so Adam and Eve, you know, they're, they're, they're uh, in, in communion with God. There's no broken fellowship there. And you guys know the story. Sin comes, the enemy comes, tempts them, and, and they end up taking the taking the bait, they go to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the only one in the garden that God said not to eat from, and the enemy tricks them. And he goes, and, and, and Eve and, and him eat of the fruit of that tree. What happens is sin enters the world. When sin enters the world, it creates a gap now between a holy God. Here's a holy God. Holy, look holy, bro. Holy yeah, <laughs> look holy and righteous. Here's a holy and righteous God. And then here's, I'm going to be the sinful man. Reach out to me, bro. Just stay right there. Just reach, reach to me. What happened was they were in covenant. Grab me. They were in covenant. Covenant is an agreement between two, two parties. It's an agreement. It's a, it's a binding agreement, a promise between two parties. We're, we're connected. But sin came in and broke this thing. Boom. 
And now, where we don't have connection anymore, sin drove us away from one another. And now God, because he's holy and he's righteous, can't have anything to do with sin. Because if he has something to do with sin, if, if sin is a part of him, then that no longer makes him good. Amen? And he's got to be God. He's righteous. He's holy. He's justice. He's all those awesome things. But he cannot be a part of sin. So it's breaking his heart because the one, cre uh, the, the one part of creation that he made to have a loving, fellowshipping, deciding Choice relationship with him has now been broken away from him because of sin. And so man now, if you can imagine a huge gap, it's like a canyon. It's like the Grand Canyon. Sin creates a Grand Canyon between God and us. And, and, and so man is, is reaching out, and he's reaching out for God. And so what happens is now, man, through, through history and in our lives, what happens is we have a huge yearning and a need for God because he made us to be with him. He, he made us to be the, he, that, so that he would be the ultimate fulfillment for our life. So that he would be everything we need, everything we want. That we would find all our truth, all our peace, all of our identity, everything in him. Because he made us in his image and in his likeness. And so we reach, but since we're, 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 we're bridged from that, we're reaching out. We're really reaching for God, but what happens is we start reaching to all kinds of stuff to try to fill us. Identity in other people. What, what do people think? What do people say about me? How good am I at sports? How much money will I make one day? How many, how many girls like me? How many IG likes I got? How many views I got here? Whatever the status may be, whatever you're looking for, I got to ease my pain. I've got to comfort. I've got I've to do something to make myself feel better. And what you're really doing, listen, is you're reaching for God. That's your yearning for God, but you're, you're, you're not allowing it to really connect with him and you're connecting it with other things that aren't good for you and that is what sin does all right and so it separates us from God okay holy God was made to have relationship with us and so fast forward here's what happens in the Bible the Bible says that God of course he wants to use us he wants to win us back buy us back and so in order for that sin uh, that gap the Grand Canyon to be covered something's got to happen because the covenant was broken so the covenant's got to be reestablished. And so in Genesis chapter 12, if you can put that up there, here's what happens. Because if God's going to use somebody, he's got he's to use people, right? And it says this, now the Lord had said to Abram. You guys want to read this together? Let's try it. Look up here. Let's read it together. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and your father's house to a land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Let's read that one more time. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Next one. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Okay, here's what happens. He tells, God says, okay, I've got this huge desire in my heart now. I've got to win people back to me. I want them to come back into relationship with me. And so what happens over time after Adam and Eve and Noah and, and all these different biblical figures, he raises up a man named Abraham. Abraham. Say, what's up, Abraham? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he said, what's up, bro? So Abraham now is, is a man that God calls. And he tells this promise to this man, Abraham. And he says, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. Stand right here, man. I'm going to bless you. This is what he's saying to him. I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to bless you, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed through you. Everybody say, watch this. Now, I see, I want you guys to understand this, okay? Before, Because I'm trying to kind of get there quick, but I want you guys to understand this. That's why I'm trying to show it to you. When he speaks to Abraham, he's not just speaking to the person Listen, this is very important. He's speaking over Abraham's bloodline. He says, Abraham, I'm speaking a blessing over you, but not just over you, over all the descendants of your bloodline. So Abraham's bloodline carries a blessing because God spoke it over him. He said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you great. I'm going to bless the entire world through you. Abraham was a man of faith. 
He decided to follow God. And faith is what brings us close to God. It's what pleases God. And so Abraham had to step out on faith. And God, God creates a covenant with him. This is called the Abrahamic covenant. He creates a covenant with him. And here's what happens. He has a, he has a son, a, fi- a promised son way down the line. Abraham has a son named Isaac. What's up, Isaac? What's up, man? You look like Isaac, man. So, you want to say what's up to everybody, Isaac? What's up? <laughs> what's up? Isaac, okay? So God blesses Abraham. Abraham has a son. His name's Isaac. Isaac has a son, and his name is Jacob. Hey, all right, all right, Jacob. <laughs> you want to say what's up, Jacob? What's up, y'all? What's up, y'all? So Jacob, watch this. Jacob gets his name changed to Israel. Israel becomes a nation that God works his miracles through and to show his power through over the course of history. His name is Israel. Jacob gets his name changed to Israel. Israel has has several sons, 12 different sons, and one of them is, is, she's going to be the son. I just wanted to include the ladies, okay? So pretend like this is, pretend like this is uh, Judah, all right? Yeah. So your name's Judah, all right? So Abraham, or I mean, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob has 12 sons. One of the sons is named Judah. Everybody say, what's up, Judah? I'm going to put your bass, put your deep voice on and say, what's up? What's up? <laughs> so this is Judah. Judah then has on down through generations, a a, a son of the bloodline, and his name is David. Everybody say, what's up? What's up, David? What's up? What's up? David, all right? And then what happens is the Bible says from Abraham all the way 42 generations through the line of David, watch this, through the line of David comes this man named Jesus. I need one person, my man. Come on. Right there. You've been raising your hand. Come on, man. Yeah, you. Hustle, hustle. Use your muscle. And you're going to be Jesus. Hustle. Jesus, watch this. What Jesus has to do, though, watch, guys. This is powerful. I'm giving you an entire, I'm showing you the entire Bible in 20 minutes. No, seriously. This is an entire Bible in 20 minutes. And so he speaks over the blessing. Where's the blessing? Is it on Abraham or is it on his bloodline? It's on his bloodline. Because the covenant can only be established through blood. So what happens is he speaks over him and the blessing goes down through all these generations. And then all of a sudden Jesus comes. He's the son of God. He lives a perfect life. Listen, he dies a horrible death, death on a cross. He had to live a perfect life so that he could overcome all of sin. And then he had to die so that he could overcome death. So now in him, there's victory over sin and over death. And so Jesus stretches out his hands, and he, and he dies on the cross. Boom. <laughs> and what happens is, what, what, what happens when he's, when he's dying on the cross? What's being shed? What, come on, y'all. What's being shed? Blood. And because blood is now being shed, what happens is, The blessing that was on this bloodline has come through Jesus. And now what happens in this new covenant? There's a new covenant that is is established that the Bible says in 2 Corinthians. You can put your arms down, Jesus, for a minute. I'm going to keep you guys up here for just a second. Go. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's read it together. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Next one. All is is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Here's what happens. That word reconciliation is is like a it's like a war term. It's it's a it's a war term, and at the end of it, uh, at the end of war, there's a peace treaty signed to say there's gonna be no more battle. There's no more, there's no more of, of a war between between these two parties, where the covenant was and it got broken, it's now reestablished. And so the blessing flows through this, this entire bloodline. And what happens is now when Jesus dies, look, even if you're not a part of the Israel nation or this bloodline, because Jesus shed his blood 
Now, every single one of us who place our faith and place our trust in Jesus, I place my faith and trust in Jesus. I was 17 years old, went to a Christian youth camp just like this and said, God, come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. I recognize my sin, the thing that has broken me from you. And I need you in my life. Come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. Jesus did that. And when he did that, I stepped into a relationship with God through Jesus. I have a connection with God through Jesus. And now watch. The same blessing, the same blessing that was on the bloodline of Abraham now runs through onto Jesus. And guess who the blessing's on now because of where I'm at? It's on me. I'm blessed I'm God's chosen person. I'm a part of his family. I'm a part of the bloodline blessing because of my faith, not in myself, not in Abraham, not any of these other normal people, but because of the son of God who came and lived a perfect life, died a horrible death, death on a cross that I might have a relationship with him. So I link up with, get me your left hand. I link up with Jesus. And what Jesus does is he wins me back. He purchases me back and he brings me back. Come here, God. And he, go, go, go hook up with God, man. Boom. And he hooks up with God. And now I have a relationship with God. Look, through Jesus Christ. The reason I can have relationship with God is only because of Jesus. The Bible says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. That no one can come to the Father except through him. The only way I get to God, the only way I get to the blessing, the only way I get to true life, the only way I get to true living is through having a relationship with God. Jesus. Amen? Amen. Give it up for Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jesus, everybody. All right. You guys sit down. All right. All right. Good, 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 good. So does that help you guys understand? You get it. All right. Look at somebody and say, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. And so I'm just, I want it to be really simple and straight to the point here so you guys can, can really grab this. I'm going to set up a scene. And here's how Jesus wins us back. Okay, you guys saw that. Jesus wins us back. But I'm going to set up a scene. And I'm going to show you how God makes us and how he sees us when, when now we step into a covenant relationship with God through his son Jesus. So I am, I am, I am God, right? And I'm going to stand here. The Bible says that God is, is the, that righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Okay, he's God and he's God all by himself. And so he can't be anything but God. And what happens is sin puts us on trial. And so let's go into a courtroom. All right. Let's go into a courtroom and imagine you're on trial. You're on trial for all the things that you've done wrong. All right. Justin, I want you to stand up, man. You're going to be the young man on trial. Stand right there, brother. You're coming before the judge right here at the foot of the steps right there, right there. Justin's on trial. Justin has done all kinds of crazy stuff. He's, he's a sinner. He's had all kinds of issues in his life, and he's far from God. Okay? He's a sinner. What happens is the Bible says that there's a devil, an, advers- an, an adversary. Pastor Jerome's going to be the enemy. Come here, man. Pastor Jerome is going to be the enemy. And what happens is it's like a courtroom. So this, this guy is on trial. And Pastor Jerome is like what the devil, the Bible says the devil is, that he is an adversary. And what he does is he stands before God all day and night. This is what the devil does. And he throws accusations from Justin onto God, telling God why Justin is not worthy of a relationship with God. And so, man, I want you just to start throwing all all the stuff he's done. Just start throwing the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah. And so he's throwing all this stuff and he's telling God and he's reminding God why he's not worthy, why he's not worthy of a relationship. And so here's what happens. The Bible says that that Jesus, all right, Jesus is like an advocate to the father. Okay. And so, uh, uh, Chris, man, why don't you come be Jesus, bro? I'm going to use my my leaders. Chris is going to be Jesus. And what happens is. What happens is, watch this, all these accusations, all this stuff. So while he's his, law, he's his prosecuting attorney, right, and he's trying to prosecute him and, and say, 
he, he's because the wages of sin is death. And so he's like, God, he's not, he's not worthy of a relationship with you. He needs to die. He needs to go to hell. He needs to burn forever. Look at all that he's done. And he's throwing all this stuff at him. And so what happens is, and, and you know what? That's true. And so he's, the enemy's reminding God of the truth of what he said about, about that and what's in his word. And so what Jesus does is he comes and he is the advocate, right? He's, he's not just an attorney that's going to come to God and say, hey, man, you really need to let him in. Like, you know, we need to have a conversation. This is a, he, it's, he's going to be okay. He's a good guy. No, no. You know what he does? Don't, 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 don't. Don't put him on, on, uh, uh, on the death penalty because I know that's what it is. The wages of sin is death. God, don't sentence him as a righteous judge. Don't sentence him to death. Instead, what happens is Jesus comes. Stretch your hands out, man. Stretch your arms out on the cross. Turn around. What happens is he comes, and all the accusations now that he's throwing to God about Justin's life Jesus comes, man, this is powerful, guys. He comes and he takes them all. All the accusations, all the sin, all the hurt, all the pain, every single thing that keeps you from being able to be rightfully in a relationship with God, Jesus takes it upon himself, the Bible says. And because, because he took it upon himself, now watch this. God no longer sees you in your sin he sees you when you step into a relationship with Jesus through the blood filter, the blood covering of Jesus Christ. So now when God looks at Justin, when he stands and he looks at Justin, he no longer sees him in all his sin. But he sees him through the perfect blood of Jesus. And so when he looks at Justin, he sees him as righteous. He sees him as holy. He sees him as everything that Jesus was. And so all his faith and trust is in Jesus, and now Jesus buys him back. And here's what happens. There's a decision. It comes in. The jury's in. A decision comes in, and God is getting ready to make his determination. It's, a, it's time for the sentence to be released. God raises his mallet. He's getting ready to tell him what's going down. He raises his mallet, and he goes, a declaration has been made. A decision in the court has been made. And he lowers his mallet, and he hits it on his desk. And he says, here, here it is. You are declared righteous or you are justified. And listen, you have been released of all charges. Be free. And then what happens is, boom, there's, there's a relationship here. And covenant, covenant now with God is established through Jesus Christ. You guys sit down. Here's what I want you guys to see tonight. That's, that's the demonstration of the covenant. I'm done. But I want you guys to understand. It's not about what you do that makes you right with God. You'll never be able to do enough to be good enough to earn God's blessing, to be good enough to be right with God. It's all about what Jesus did. And so what we do as, as believers, as young men, as young ladies, we place all of our faith, all of our trust, nowhere else but in Jesus. And because all of our faith and trust is in Jesus, he makes us right with God. <clears throat> a lot of you guys have been saying, you know, a, a lot about, and we sing about a good, good father. And I, we've been hearing a lot from you guys about the fact that there are so many of you guys that are like, man, I have so much hurt in my dad, against my dad. There's so many things in my dad, like my dad wasn't there, my dad this, my dad that. And that's been a, kind of the highlight of the day. And so number one, here's what I, because I, f I feel like there's a clear understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ demonstrated here. That's all we wanted to get out today for sure, that it's clear. Is it clear? Do you guys understand? You understand? So when you make a decision, you're making a decision to follow Jesus, to step into relationship with him. Now, some of you guys may, have, may say, you know what, I've never been there before. I've never really truly made a, made a commitment to Jesus. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that tonight. If you say, Pastor Chad, that's me, I'm ready to do it. I've been up here for three days at camp now. I'm, not, I, I'm ready. 
I'm not, I'm not going to fight it anymore. I am outside of the will of God, and I am not in relationship with God, and I want to step into the blessing. I want to step back into covenant with God because I know that he made me to know him and to make him known. And so I'm stepping into relationship with him. And so if that's you, Pastor Chad, I've never done that before. I've never asked Jesus into my heart to be Lord of my life and truly meant it. And you want to make a decision to know Christ. I want you tonight, I want you just to raise your hand on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. You're saying, I've never made that decision and I want to do that tonight. I've never made that decision and I want to do that tonight. All right? Yeah? All right, then get out of your seat. I want you guys to come down here. Come on. Get out of your seat. Come down here. All right? Get out of your seat. Come down here. Just, yeah, just come down here. All right? 